What's up guys, we are here for our premiere episode of This Week in Homesteading. How are you guys doing? Glad to announce it, glad to have you here. And we are gonna cover a couple things today, and I don't know if this will always be the format, that we'll do every time, but for this week, we are going to go over some current events, some things that are going on in the poultry world, in the world of homesteading. It's gonna be a heavy dose of uh, poultry, at least here in the first episode. We're gonna go through some of the things that you guys have been up to in a section we're gonna call Homestead Happenings. We're also gonna have a commercial break featuring a business from one of you viewers, and then we're gonna wrap it up with one of the hottest things on YouTube these days, a little game I like to call You Laugh, You Lose. So first of all, I wanna introduce myself. My name is Jake with White House on the Hill. And this is the first episode, like I said, of This Week in Homesteading. Our goal is to go over some current events, go over what you guys have been up to, have some fun along the way, and just help build a community as homesteaders. So let's get started. So when I'm going through current events, I like to go through different things that I either pop up in articles or things that I read in emails. I subscribe to a lot of different homesteading networks. One of them's called Countryside Daily. If you guys are not subscribed to it, I'm gonna put a link down in the description. That's where I get a lot of my good reading material on a daily basis. But today I'm gonna to talk about some of the emails I've been getting from the hatcheries. That's right, these hatcheries are harassing us by letting us know they've got chicks available. That's so ridiculous. I mean, we got these catalogs like Cackle Hatchery, Hoover Hatchery, Ugh, McMurray Hatchery, who's ever heard of them? Metzer Farms. I mean, I don't even have a catalog from Harlan Hatchery. They're a small two-man operation down in Southern Missouri. If you haven't heard about Harlan Hatchery, you need to check out this video because they are pretty sweet. So these hatcheries have the audacity to let me know that they've got nine hatches left in 2016. 17, if it isn't enough pressure enough to grow the chicks that you have or the chickens that you have, you've got to worry about what to have next year. And these guys, certainly, they want to end the year strong, but man, does it put some unwanted pressure on you when you see things like how many hatches they have left and that you got to act fast, that they've got deals on Jumbo Cornish Cross, like they're the rarest bird out there. Like Hoover Hatchery telling me top five reasons to buy fall chicks. Let's go through them right now because I need to know why I need chicks right now. No more slim picking. When picking out chicks this spring, it'd be hard to find all the breeds you want to ship on the same date. At Hoover, we have many of our rare layer breeds still hatching. Awesome. Spring eggs. It takes about 22 weeks, so five to six months for a bird to start laying. If chicks are purchased in the fall, you'll have an abundance of fresh eggs to eat in the spring and for coloring eggs for Easter. Very well thought out. Fill your freezer. Fall is a great time to raise meat birds. You still have a good six to eight weeks to raise some broilers if you missed your chance this summer. Sales. Take advantage of the end of season chick equipment sales and spring calling. When your new birds start to lay in the spring, your older birds may go through a molt. You may find that some breeds are less productive during this time. Great reasons, Hoover. I'm sold. I need some chicks. And that section of current events, if you guys ever have any good articles, always feel free to send them my way. I will have my social media links in the description and my email is down there as well. So send that on to me, but we always need new information, new stories here on This Week in Homesteading. Okay, in the second segment of the show, we are gonna go through what you guys have been up to in a section we call Homestead Happening. Let's take a look at what you guys have been up to this summer. I'm just gonna pop through these really fast. I'm gonna throw some comments out there here and there, but I just want you guys to see and get a little high five Found from the community on what you've been up to. All right, so Lori's got a really cool comment. She's on a five to seven year plan. She's writing a book for her grandchildren from A to Z on homesteading. That's pretty cool, Lori. I think that is a good idea for all of us to do. Rick Mitchell, a good friend of the vlog, started raising chickens this year. Six chicks. Yep, that sounds familiar. It all started with six chickens. Eli, come on over here, buddy. Little guest star here from Eli. What are you doing right now? Working with a bullseye. Awesome. All right, Alan. He has a little backyard garden for veggies. They also planted fruit trees, blackberries, raspberries, blueberries. Patsy, I'm familiar with her. She has a small farm with cows. Way to go, Yippee. Patsy. James in NYC, thanks for watching. He's got a container garden in New York. That's really cool. William, I believe he is in Washington. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe he was the first subscriber to the channel. Uh, he raised and slaughtered chickens, turkeys, and pigs this year. He's clearing brush for a future steer and planning a layout for his apple orchard. Way to go, William. Hey, John is like many of you guys. He is searching for land. Uh, actually, he's just like us. He is looking for land uh, to start his homestead on. And I am glad he is here to check us out and get some ideas on what he can do for his farm. Julianne, she has got a container garden, chickens, Nigerian dwarf goats, 
They give great milk and making cheese soap. Another personal care. Right on. All right, Mr. Janazga. I'm not positive, but I believe he's in Poland. And he has a small balcony garden. And he is learning to start his homestead soon as well. Bill's been doing all kinds of stuff. He is up in, I believe, Long Island. I know they've got some chickens. Uh, he actually went and visited John Siskowich's farm. If you haven't checked out John Siskowich's YouTube channel, please go check it out. That's where we modeled our chicken tractors after. John has pasture-raised chicken on his farm. And they've got a brewery there. I think it's Kent Falls Brewery. He goes on to rub it in that he won an incubator. Way to go, Bill. Grow you a whole bunch of Chicks. And Bill is also looking for land in an area of New York so he can have a larger homestead. Fellowship of the Green, they've got chickens, ducks, quail, garden, and a greenhouse. And they sell microgreens and herbs to restaurants. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> Melissa has a hanging planter herb garden. And I've got a picture of it right here. She is a great photographer, by the way. Nice job, Melissa. You don't want to say hi? I got to chase you like I chased the kids. All right, S. Day. I'm sorry, I don't know your first name. Please let me know what your first name is. S. Day is trying to merge five chickens in with two existing chickens and two ducks. Always a fun challenge. <laughs> So the Belt King's got all kinds of things going on. Way to go, guys. Got a small business and a medicinal herb farm that they are running side by side their own homestead. That's pretty cool. Any way to make money from your own homestead is all right by homestead me. Homestead approved. Eli says that's pretty cool too. Thank you, buddy. You go ahead and holster that thumbs up for later. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but I think it's St. Fie Acres or St. Fie Acres Farm. Welcome from down at St. Fie Acres Farm. They've got a pretty impressive story. I'll probably feature them as one of the businesses here on the channel in the future, so look forward to that. They have expanded their garden four times this year. So they can grow all their own tomatoes for the sauce, put up a bunch of food, we ferment all our pickles and store them under the house, and we grow year-round in a 40-foot greenhouse. That is cool. If you want to check out more of them, go to stfieacres.com. But stay tuned, we will talk about them more in the future. And D Big Pinoy, I don't know if there's a word in there that I'm missing. D Big Pinoy, in the process of purchasing 15 to 30 acre tree farm, start his homestead. That's pretty cool guys, keep it up. All right, this little commercial break, we are going to feature one of our subscribers, websites and businesses. Rick Mitchell has a business called Signature Wines of Ohio. And he let us know that it, this is specifically for people that live in Ohio. So if you are not in Ohio, I am sorry, but you can't get wine shipped to you from them. But I did want to give him a shout out because I think it's really cool. Anybody that has their own small business and if alcohol is involved, I support you. <laughs> His website is called SignatureWinesOfOhio.com. I'm gonna put a link down in the description. Rick, if there's anything we need to know about this business, I'm sorry, I should have gotten more info from you, but just go ahead and put it down in the comments. And if you guys are interested, go find Rick there, but he is also you can contact him through his website I believe and then you can also find him on Instagram he's got a great Instagram account and on Facebook as well so Rick good job keep it up signature wines of Ohio we are now at our new favorite segment of the show you're gonna love it you guys will be looking forward to this every week and it is called you, you laugh, laugh you lose <laughs> So we are gonna read your responses to my question that I ask you, which is, you, you have, have too many chickens, chickens when? when? Finish that sentence. And then you supplied the joke. We are gonna read it, and we're gonna see if you can make us laugh with your responses. See, that's Becky, by the way. She is also on the vlog if you are new to our channel. His wife. Thank you. <laughs> so we're gonna read your responses to the question and see if you can get us to laugh. Here we go. Go. You have too many chickens when, if you are in an HOA, which doesn't allow chickens. My chicken math answer ain't right. Two plus two equals five. Oh my God. <laughs> when your neighbor tells you your top hen knocked on her door asking to borrow a cup of sugar. When the wife says you have too many chickens. That's very true. It's true. It's not funny. When you have more eggs than you can handle and those eggs just rot on the counter. Yeah. Eggs don't rot on the counter, Alejandro. People eat eggs. Don't you worry about it. You have too many chickens when you have to start letting them roost in your own bed. What? <laughs> That's silly. That was your mother. <laughs> William says you have too many chickens when you can't keep them off the bed. John says he can't wait to find out when he has too many chickens. You and me both, John. You and me both. You have too many chickens when 
They're in your dreams and you don't think that's weird at all. Do you dream about chickens? No. If your neighbors and family don't want the eggs, even for free. That's sad. When you use them as a down feather pillow. You're actually sleeping on a chicken? That was your sister, ask your sister. It says dad joke in parentheses. <laughs> the two that you kind of semi get as a joke are your mom and your sister. You have too many chickens when never ever. Too many, it just depends. The old one's not laying anymore, could be tilling the garden still or pets. I know you weren't telling a joke, you were just making a fact, but when the wife gives you a death stare when you talk about getting more. And how that is. That's a true statement. You ask your friends if they're interested in starting their own urban hen house. And the last one, too many chickens, impossible. What? Dan from the Grassfed Homestead got into our chat. Too many chickens. He doesn't even know what he's got. Ashley's the one that orders them all. Oh, snap! You just got burned, Dan. And Dan, you're all over YouTube. You got featured in not one Justin Rhodes Farm Tour video. Okay, Dan, oh, help us out. But you're in a second one where you're an awesome ex-detective that is now a shepherd. And then you're in a third one where you're now associated with everything Star Wars. This is like the Millennial Falcon. But in all seriousness, Dan's a cool guy. If you haven't seen his channel, what are you doing? You need to go check out his channel. He's cool. He's one of the reasons we're here on YouTube. Thanks, Dan, for supplying your little, uh, joke. <laughs> But you are always welcome here. We love you, Omen. Episode one, this week in homesteading in the book. Episode two, coming out next week. So please comment down below. Let us know what you've been up to this week on your homestead. And next week's question said, what is the funniest thing that has happened on your homestead? If you don't have a homestead, it's all up here, guys. What is the funniest thing that has happened on your homestead? Let me know. Go crazy. Start to comment. Let's hear ya. Yep.